Soul Wind TV presents. Welcome again to our podcast, Bullseye Nuclear, where we talk about unapologetic truth. This is an arm of Empowered to Change, and we want to welcome today Derek Miller. He is a, an amazing man. I can't wait for you to hear some of his lived experiences and his why of why he is here and why he does what he does. So in honor of Black History Month, and in honor of this fine uh, executive of Empowered to Change International, I want to welcome Derek Miller, and thank you so much for coming on. Thanks for having me, Michelle. So as we are just getting real here <laughs> on our podcast, um, I want to ask you a couple of questions. You know, I know you. Um, I would say on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being I know you really, really well, it's probably a good, what, 5, right? Okay, true. It has That's true. Is that fair? That's fair. So um, I want to ask a couple of things about what led you up to this place at Empower to Change, where you get up every day, you serve other people, you pour into broken people. Mm -hmm. And I just want to give you the floor as to, you know, I know I know the jobs you came from, right. but I don't know the why. And so I want to start there, but then I also want to segue into um, Black History Month and what is your take on that and what is your view? Because um, I want to hear more about that. I want the listeners to really understand why we celebrate celebrate Black History Month and really how can we do more? Okay. How can we do more? How can all we right. do more? What do we need to change? What do we need to do? So oh, there you right. go. Not uh, a tall <laughs> order for you today. <laughs> not at all. Not at all. So uh, you asked me what brought me here to yeah. empower to change uh, a little bit of my why. Um, it's a long road to be quite honest. Um, probably started before I even realized you know what was going on. Um, I come from a, a pretty strong family, um, mm -hmm. but it didn't start off that way because um, I've come from um, a teenage mother and a teen teenage father, um, both who struggled with um, alcohol and drug addictions. Mm -hmm. um, I had a, a great grandmother and great grandmother um, that really, um, while they were struggling in their addictions, um, kind of walked me towards the right, right path. Now, they didn't do it th by themselves because, of course, they, they introduced me to a relationship with the Lord. Okay. Um, but did I know that at the time? No. Mm -hmm. um, but knowing that and seeing my father's addiction, my mother's addiction, and the things that had pulled us apart from each other. I mean, I, at one point, really didn't want to have a relationship with my mother because of her addiction. Okay. Um, it was just not worth it to me. It was, you know, you're dragging myself and the family down because you were so hooked on this substance. And what age did you notice that? Like, when did you notice that this was not healthy for you? I would say somewhere 13, 14, 15, when I was watching when, you okay. know, I had sporting events and no one was there. Mm. Or, you know, when I went around my mother, um, you know, and it was more about them going and partying uh, when my father chose to do everything but be there for me. Right. So for me, it was like, okay, let me figure this out on my own. Okay. Um, and I don't want a part of either of you. Mm -hmm. Show you honor and respect for being my sure, parents. Sure, sure. But I don't want a part of you because you didn't want a part of me. And you figured that out at an early age. I had to figure it out. Right. Um, you know, when you're put in those situations – you have to figure out things immediately okay. and not say my view was perfect, um, hey. but I, I it put walls around me. Okay. And so with these walls, I kind of walked through and went with that seen but not heard 
mm-hmm. um, lifestyle. And that was with every walk. That yeah. was in my friendships. That was in my relationship with my families. And that was, you know, being afraid to use my voice because, again, um, just what you did, you never knew what was going to happen. So, um, so you built some walls. Major walls. Isn't that interesting how it will trickle on into just, like, everything else? Uh, it trickled into everything. Wow. Relationships, not knowing what it really meant or felt like to be loved or what even love is. Okay. Um, so. That's real. Uh, yeah. That's so, real. And I mean, I that's, that's the backstory. Right. Okay. Um, but in that and through that over the years, you know, um, I was blessed with two daughters and um, I'm married and, and divorced. So I was divorced and then remarried. Mm-hmm. And then through that divorce, um, I saw pain that I inflicted on somebody else by decisions that I made based on things that I saw growing up, yeah. thinking that was the right way. Even though I couldn't stand it mm-hmm. when I was in it, I did the same thing. Totally understand that. Um, and so I went through that. And then again, I, my relationship with the Lord, it just, when my daughters were born, it started again. Mm-hmm. It started to simmer. Because the one thing that I knew that they did right was introduce me to the Lord. Okay. Now, did they walk perfect and have a good path mm-hmm. or everything? No. And I don't, none of us, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. That, <laughs> like, not I don't at know all. What that yeah. Is. But, um, but it was just one thing I knew that I needed to introduce. Yeah. What I didn't know is in bringing them into that environment that it was going to have an effect on them. Mm hmm. And so as I've went through my professional career, working in different um, areas of managing people, not being the manager, being the manager, working for people that just were pursuing money, mm-hmm. that didn't fulfill me. Okay. Um, there was no fulfillment in that. Yeah. I have no impact on anyone. It was just Derek's the boss. He's doing what they said. And whether I agreed or not. Didn't matter. Didn't matter. Right? Just do it. You got paid, though. I got paid. I mm-hmm. had benefits. Mm-hmm. I had everything. It mm-hmm. looked good on paper, right? But inside, it didn't feel good, um, and mm-hmm. that's not who I was. Okay. And um, I mean, I'll share how we met, please. You know, um, please, so. because I personally believe in divine intervention. Yeah. And I've never um, met and hired somebody like that. Yeah. It you know, it's like, pretty, whoa, pretty, what? Where are you? Yeah, pretty wild. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I heard that you were, you know, looking for a position. Mm-hmm. I submitted my resume, but I think you had already hired someone for the spot. Mm-hmm. Um, one of my colleagues. Um, and so one morning mm-hmm. we were at a meeting together, a uh, prayer mm-hmm. meeting. Right. So I'm going to chime in yeah. so our listeners understand when um, when there's a position that comes open just in the last year, I thought, you know, I used to and I still do. We just advertise it everywhere. But I kind of upped our game a little bit and I started sending it out to colleges and community churches and um, also any community nonprofit Uh, places where I'm just I'm just like mad posting (laughs) you know whatever comes up Mm -hmm. and um, I got a a response just from this particular church that Mm -hmm. I was um, you know hadn't been attending very long Um, but I'm gonna tell you I sent it to half a dozen churches and half a dozen other places so the fact that I got a response and it was it was you and I didn't know who you were. No, I don't so know. we didn't know that's each other. just some backstory right there. Yeah. So, so we you, went, yeah. We were at a prayer meeting, prayer, right? Uh, we were at a prayer prayer meeting. You were leaving. I was leaving. It's a morning. It's I don't a morning. you like, know, it's a morning. So Never had really seen you. I can't say I'd ever seen you. Right. Until you walked back I think somebody me. said, Now that's Derek. Okay. And I walked, or no, no, nobody even said that. I don't think so. I, I, somebody, I had asked like a week or two before, hey, who is this person? Oh, he's on, he's on a worship team. Yeah. So I think that was the back of that. But then when I walked past you, walked out the door, it was in my heart, go back in. That's who that is. Yeah. So you can take it from there. I'd say that's how it happened. You walked in. You introduced yourself. We had a conversation. You asked me to come and just kind of see what you do. Mm-hmm. Um, and from that point on, when I came in um, and just saw what you did, there was just, I'll say a light switch went on. Okay. Or, or even better, maybe uh, the tinder at the bottom of a fire. Okay. It just started smoldering a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was like, oh, I need to know more. 
I need to see more. I need to help out. I need to volunteer. Mm -hmm. And the reason that I needed to do that was because of my past. Because I, I told you briefly about my mother. Right. But my mother has now been sober for over 28 years. That's awesome. And my mother had went from being addicted to being a master social worker counselor. And she counsels people in this world. Mm -hmm. um, and my father also went to be a, a licensed social worker. Um, he didn't deal with recovery or addiction, but that's what he did. And it just seems like something about that wow. just resonated with me. Mm -hmm. um, and in my role um, in, my previous, in my previous career, I did more counseling and coaching than I did probably what they asked me to do if that makes sense yes and does that f is that fulfilling for you that's that's what it is yeah because people um need guidance mm -hmm. they need direction mm -hmm. um and i don't think they get enough of it um there's healthy direction um there's healthy counseling um and i feel this place here uh, we're unapologetically unapologetically um in your i won't say in your face but direct in your business in your business yes but not in a point that we're trying to use it against no, you no no but in a way that we're trying to sh transfer turn around and shape you and point you into the uh, right direction that maybe you missed on the way the, and that when you say right direction a direction that they want to go they want that they get to speak in to hey i want to this is not who I want to be in this place. And you mentioned your, your mom and your dad. And here's what I see, too. I'm very thankful for our licensed therapists. I happen to know that licensed therapists, they are overwhelmed post-COVID. Yeah. They, are, they are maxed out. They need more people. They're yeah. overwhelmed. But what I am also seeing happen is that people like your mom and dad that have turned their life around, mm -hmm. Um, they're into so they're they are into social work, yeah. and here's what what anybody has that is maybe even not a licensed therapist, but what you have is your lived experience, 100%. and everybody's lived experience can be turned into something that will help another person. Agreed. And you don't need a you don't need a license for oh, that. No. Your experience gives you the license for 100%. that, right? My experience. Yes. And everyone's. Experience. Uh, yes. And I remember when you first came and you wanted to volunteer. Listen, Coral and I um we volunteered <laughs> <laughs> for the first several months. Um and most people that joined uh this organization started off volunteering okay, right yeah. because it is it is um i say it's and i don't mean this pridefully it's not for the weak no. right because if you're going to enter in an organization to speak into people's lives speak into people's broken lives we ourselves have to be willing to change and that is a continual thing it's not a one and done it's not a oh we've arrived we've never arrived yeah. right it's a process it's a process and we and and i remember you saying boy it's not easy to work here it's not and i said oh i know and i almost wanted to go i'm so sorry but at the same time i i'm not sorry because that's what it is life is hard yes it is and we are we're constantly growing together. We have to um, walk in truth and our truth too, right? Yeah, 100%. And we can't expect um, broken people that enter in our program um, to change and to be willing to be held accountable and to be honest and all of that if we ourselves are not. So that, that's that's a true point, uh, true statement, because, you know, you, you grow up and it's, you know, you grow up, you get a career, you get a job. Right. And so if you, get your a paycheck. you get a paycheck. So if your mindset is job, paycheck, advance, advance financially, you know, yeah, get up the ladder, get up the ladder. Mm -hmm. And now you've made it. Right. But have you really made it? I mean, well, what have you made? You, more, you, money, more money, more stress. <laughs> You know, you, you know, potentially lose family, you know, all these different right. things. But here it's not about that. It's about it, you grow. Yes. You think you're here to help people grow? Exactly. No, you grow. Because right. you can't talk to someone about something if you're not working on you. 
guy. You don't even know that you're working on you sometimes. Mm -hmm. But if I'm going to sit across from That's someone real. and have a conversation with them, um, I have to check myself. Yes. Right? And I have to check myself. And they need to know that I've had a past, that I've walked on the other side. It wasn't a, a, a hop, skip, and a jump. It was a, a, a journey. Mm -hmm. But you got to be willing to push through that. And there's no perfection. There no. never is. We never arrive. Oh, no. You just. Like when we're dead. You keep getting better. <laughs> right. Keep taking steps to improve. And we learn. And then we share what we've learned. That's right. Yeah. And so so my journey, is, it's been, um, I'll say, uh, rocky, up and down. Mm -hmm. But I think that everyone's yeah. journey has, yeah. is rocky and up and down. And if you tell me it's not, I question your integrity. That's right. Um, because we all have a story. We do. Um, and, and being here, I've seen a lot of stories. And wouldn't you say um, that one of our main themes is no shame? We don't receive the shame no. because um, I can assign shame in my own life and mm -hmm. my own struggles and my own things. But then that's not going to help me and it's not doing anybody any favor. It's true. So it's like and it's this incredible um, dichotomy, if you will, just to deal with issues and identify that that so many of us have in the past walked in shame so many people we pour into have shame guilt oh yeah like you mentioned um a first marriage mm -hmm. i understand mm -hmm. and you know we can't go back in time we can only learn and and remove and reject the shame yeah. and then continue on in our own growth and then helping others 100 percent. shame is a big deal yeah. Um, people walk on, walk in. A, some people are just, I don't know. It's like they're saturated in it. Right. Um, and, and just to be able to pull and work with them to pull that away. Mm -hmm. Um, it's a process. Yeah. But if you're going to pull it and help them through that process, you have to work through your own. Right. As well. I love it. Um, and so, um, yeah. I, so I would like to, um, kind of segue okay. cause it's not even a switch. It's mm -hmm. a segue into um, Black History Month. You are a very um, wonderful, professional, accomplished black man. Mm -hmm. Is that a safe thing? I, I told you before we started, I'm like, <laughs> I am so not qualified <laughs> to be talking to anybody and right. then asking them about their uh, black heritage. I feel very ill-equipped, and mm -hmm. I'm just being transparent with that. Yeah, I get it. Um, I, so, but that's okay, because I'm leaning into that conversation, and I know that we have such a great respect for one another, for our families. Yes. Um, we have, you know, we're, we're brothers and sisters. 100%. In Christ. That's who we are, and that goes way deeper than um, the color of our skin and the heritage at the same time I want to talk about it and w you had said a few things before we started and I just want to give you um, the floor to talk about that because I'm like oh I didn't know February was Black History Month and you didn't say it this way but it's kind of like yeah till the beginning of time <laughs> you know you didn't say it like that <laughs> <laughs> so uh, February is my birthday month and I'm just being selfish maybe yeah. you know right. and Valentine's Day mm -hmm. and lots of other things so let's talk about it and why is it only one month why like what is that about I, well I'm not gonna I can't really say why it's only one month I guess I could say they picked the month <laughs> um, and, and a lot of other um, um, all I can say is that's the month they picked. But we have, you know, um, Asian American month. We have Hispanic month and everything. Um, and as I was saying to you, you know, a month, if we're talking about the United States of America. Right. Um, for anyone is not enough. We should celebrate Americans. Yes. No matter how the whole thing went down, um, we should be celebrating that's Americans. Right. Um, and so, um, yeah, it's a month and, you know, you see it plastered on, on TV screens or whatever and people question it, but it surprises me that people question it. And I think they question it because they don't really want to know about it. Um, Which that surprises me. I want to know everything about, to know in, about not only America, but 
different backgrounds because we all came from somewhere. We did all right? come from somewhere. Um, but in some in, in my my situation of being a black American, yes, um, I think that it's there's. I'm just going to say it. I think there's shame in the way that everything went down, not from my position, mm -hmm. but from the powers to at be at the okay. time on how it went down. And there's so, that word again. Well, I mean, we're yeah. at shame. And if I can cover up what I did or not give complete truth mm -hmm. about how things went went down, mm -hmm. um, then I don't have to feel guilty uh -huh. for what I've done. Right. Um, and then it's just been a generational thing. Um, mm -hmm. Because really, t for anyone to get better, to be whole, to be healed, um, you need to have the truth. That's right. And so if there's no 100 percent, we got to get to the truth and not bits and pieces. And it might be ugly. And it, 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 it is ugly. It's, ugly, it's right? very ugly. It's ugly. I mean, I'm fortunate to know that, you know, my family, um, you know, at least on my grandmother's side, uh, you know, that, you know, they were slaves. Yeah. I know that they were in um, Mississippi. OK. I know that my family, um, my great grandfather moved his family from Mississippi to Chicago, Illinois, just for, you know, for a chance. Okay. Um, I know that, you know, from that point on, they came to the town that I grew up in and they were able to establish. And, and I guess in our world, I came from, even though what, what, what I explained in the beginning, an affluent mm -hmm. African-American family, okay. but there's still way more history than that. Right. That I don't even know, you know, that I don't know. I don't know, have a clue. And why is that not in our textbooks? Why is that history? Because I know it, it hasn't been in the textbooks. In my, and I went to public school. Mm -hmm. I was not mm -hmm. a private school kid. Okay. But why, why do you think that that's not in our textbooks? I mean, we need to be studying and getting to the truth and knowing because I 100% agree with you that if we don't get to the truth, then how can we a, a, apply grace and forgiveness right. and change, mm -hmm. right? It'd be because very we need to change. Well, we need, we need to change. We need to, why is it not in the history or, or not in the textbooks or why do people not know? You, if, if a young person in um, an area that's, um, let's just say, not uh, maybe in poverty, let's say a poverty area, poverty okay. area. Um, so I come from that area. So this is all I've seen. Right? Okay. So I go to school and I get a textbook and it says your fa your family were, you come from a line of servants, slaves, so on. Okay. What, what do you look at then? What do you, what is your goal? You don't really know what your goal is because you've never seen somebody do something better than be servants and slaves you've been pretty much told this is who you are this is who you are this is who you are this is where you come from and this is who you are so if i keep you in that mindset right then you're gonna always be a worker mm. you're gonna always be someone that works and keeps the wheel turning that's what i'll say yeah um now don't get me wrong you know there, there are prominent um, african-american men and women sure. that they speak out of you know and they let you know about but it's little hits and misses. And if you think about some of the most prominent um, African Americans that were um, prominent, successful, making impact, what happened to them? Right. They were um, killed. Right. You know why? Wow. Because they had a way, in my opinion, yeah, of course, no, this they had is, a way of pulling good. people up. Mm -hmm. And as you're pulling people up, you're a threat to the status quo. You know, and you bring something up where you're a threat to the status quo. You're a threat to the political agendas, right? It is. And giving hope to other people, when when somebody like that gives hope to other people, then all of a sudden the powers that be are all of a sudden they don't have control because what can you do with hope? You can't control hope. One hundred percent. You can't control somebody. I heard, and this cut ties right into what we're discussing here. I heard just recently, and I never heard it like this. I always kind of knew it, but the most scientific, the most dynamic piece of technology is our brains, is our minds. And scientists are trying to figure it out. They're trying to duplicate it, enter in AI, mm -hmm. um, all of these things, right? Right. But 
like you're saying, you take, you take a people group that's been enslaved, yeah. oppressed, yeah. abused. You just take this people group. And then what happens when they start going, hey, um, this is not who I am. And then we, they, they understand, oh, wow, I'm created by God. I'm created with a purpose. Doesn't matter the color of my skin. Doesn't matter where I came from. I have hope and I'm going to change where I'm going. Oh, yeah. And then, then that's where the panic really happens, right? Yeah. The, well, my father, you know, God rest his soul. One of the things he said to me, and I'll never forget it. He's like, Derek, one of the worst things that's ever happened in America, you know, you have slavery and all that, but it was when um, they started giving out um, public aid, Oof. food stamps, things to that effect to, mm. to, to our community. And your like, father says and My this. father says okay. that. And I was like, what are you talking about? You know, it's helping people. Mm -hmm. And he says it's helping people learn how to do it without the presence of the father. Mm. Because if the mother is struggling. Right. And she's able to make it without the father. What happens with that mind shift, the mindset? And what happens I, to the family dynamic that needs that dad? It's not there. Wow. And so once that's gone, I don't need you. Because I can do it on my own. Um, dad doesn't feel needed. Then I won't even go on the war on drugs. But right, you know, but, but, but feel then that, free. <laughs> but then you go down that you know that road where mm -hmm. you know um, an African American sells crack, mm -hmm. and a Caucasian sells powder. Okay, they're both cocaine. Yeah, but one's in jail forever, and one can get slapped on the hand. Right, and, and that change, mm -hmm. I would say. And I can't remember the statistics, but I think in back in the 60s, um, when my dad was growing up, 70% of men were in their homes. Hmm. And now we look at today, 70% of homes are without men. Yes. They are. Across the board, across the right? Board. Regardless. Yeah, I'm, oh, I can only speak on that. Because I don't have the stats on that either. Yeah, I, but I, I just, I'm kind of paraphrasing what I sure, know. Sure, sure. What I've read. And, and, I'm, and I've, I've been looking strictly at, at, at the African American community. Or po impoverished community, so you know that's not just African American sure. as well, and so I just think that the powers that be um, have had a masterful plan on keeping people um, in their place. Let's say mm -hmm. that way it doesn't shake up the status quo. Right. Um, that's that's I mean, real, and I honor uh, your voice in yeah. that and. We, um, I, I do like stats and we can actually, um, do another segment at another time because I want to study these stats. I want to get back on and talk about it and, yeah. and maybe even get somebody else on here as well, like a panel yeah. to say, listen, what's going on? Because I believe that we are in this era where change, um, is happening yeah. and we do, I have such hope. Because I believe that we, you and I, and everybody that has this mindset that um, we can honor one another, we can love one another, we can celebrate one another yeah. and make changes. Oh, 100%. And the, the, um, any, any political agenda that's trying to stifle free thinking um, stifle and and manipulate. Um, we have the we have the hope and the power to change that. Yes, yes, we do. We, I mean, we de certainly do. I just, you know, I like to honor every nationality. Yes, I like to know the truth about everybody. I um, think that's awesome. I think that's the only way that we can really become and be who the Lord plan, you know, had mm -hmm. out for us to be. So you mentioned the Lord. Um, will you share when you realized that you needed God? Can, will you share that just yeah. because I, I know, I know you, I know me, I know that we have commonality in Christ, yeah. that he is our hope. I know that yeah. he is our, 
he is our reason he is our our savior and we're free to talk about that we're also free to honor and respect other people's choices and what they want to believe but will you share how you know your faith and how you came to believe what you believe Uh, i want to say initially i believed because you know I i was brought up in it okay um and then like most i've stepped away okay um but then for me, as I was mentioning, when my um, oldest daughter was born, um, I started slowly getting and dabbling into trying to understand what was going. What is, what is this really? Not what my mother showed me or grandmother, but what is it to me? Mm-hmm. Um, and I mentioned my, div- my divorce. Mm-hmm. So um, during my divorce, that's probably when it really started, the Lord really started speaking to me. Okay. You know, are you this person that's going to continue to hurt people? Are you going to continue to um, use people for your gain? Mm, you know, is that what, is that who I created you to be? Um, and I started meeting more men who were showing me something I'd never seen, what, what it means to be a man, but what it means to be a godly man, how to show yeah. people respect, That's how good. to walk in integrity and honor. Um, was it an overnight thing? No. <laughs> so right. this, this never no. is. Um, but I would say within the last five years, um, it went from a slow pace to a jog, and now I'm running. I'm running to the Lord. Um, and in the last five years, it's just continuous, continuously gotten deeper and deeper. Um, you know, the place where we met, um, mm-hmm. that's probably been the place where it just is really, like, I've been, oh, I've been um, taken deeper. I've been covered with more water. Oof, as, you know, I mean, good. I went from walking on the shoreline. Okay. Um, and from the shoreline, I continue to walk out, and my water's getting deeper. Mm-hmm. And as the water gets deeper, it requires more of me. Um, and because I can't stay afloat, you know, without a little help. And I'm, the Lord's helping me stay afloat. I can come up with some air, but I need to be in that deep water mm-hmm. so I can learn Hard how to being get in that it. deep water. I need to be in that deep so I can learn how mm. to get and maneuver in it. But and there's no boat. I no mean, boat. let's just no, talk yeah, about that. No boat. There ain't no yeah, boat. no boat. But, yeah. but, but there's. But with him, I, I can I can maneuver and manage it. Yeah. So. Um, That's awesome. I, I mean, I, I could go on and on about that, but I'm just saying I'm still in that journey and that in that process and that process being here um, in power to change um, and working with these people. Mm-hmm. It really is just a part of the next step where he's taking me. Yeah. I, I don't know where he's where he's taking me. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know. We know about today. We know about right we now. We don't know about tomorrow. And I think. As we're wrapping up, I think COVID really taught me that, yeah. that when I, when legit the world shut down in less than a week, <laughs> yeah. I went, oh, wow. Like, no one would have fathomed that. No. Right? Not at all. The whole world. Couldn't even believe it. Not a state, not half the country not the united states the entire world yeah, the world shut down so we know that today we we work with today we know that in front of us we have people that are putting one foot in front of the other yeah. and i have i have such respect for really the people that we serve and our and our staff that yeah. serves them oh yeah because you whoa incredible staff. it's incredible, incredible group of people really you know people that come in you know looking for help people that don't even know that they're wanting or needing help i know i know and we're we're going to talk more about the remarkable culture okay (laughs) yeah (laughs) um at a different at a different time but i um thank you for coming on here Mm -hmm. i i want to know more i want to spend another hour or two but i think that this will give our listeners just a glimpse mm-hmm. of wow what's going on over here <laughs> yeah. and um to honor you to honor black history month but to also spur um others to go wait a second what do we need to change about this you know yeah. why are we just celebrating i think we should celebrate people, people. Mm-hmm. daily celebrate and wherever we go not just be a fad not just be a oh it's this month let's you know have a cake cake, right um but we we start somewhere and i believe 
that even just talking about it, even just sharing it um, with the listeners uh, around the state and the country, and we are reaching beyond our borders. Yeah. So, hey, let's just keep on doing that. Let's do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So thank you. You're very welcome. Thanks for having me. Thank you. And thank you guys for listening. And we so appreciate each and every one of you. Please hit the subscribe button if you are on YouTube. And uh, we also have a QR code at the end of this where you can scan and learn more about Bullseye Nuclear and also Empowered to Change International. Until next time, you guys, thank you. Coming soon at the Central Park Performing Arts Center in Largo, Florida, the first annual Solwyn Women's Conference. Hear 20 plus inspiring speakers that will transform you, shift you into your divine path. Mark your calendars, ladies, June 21st to the 23rd. Three full days of fellowship, worship, encouragement, and supporting local female business owners. When your soul prospers, so will your health, your finances, and your relationships. I need a lot of time trying to figure it out. You're stronger than you think. God wants us to walk in freedom. He wants us to understand the blessing. It's time to be healed in your soul, know your true worth, and be all you were beautifully and wonderfully made to be. Purchase your tickets now for this life-changing event at www.soulwindconference.com.